electric cars get more and more popular and more brands start to make them, it makes sense why Volvo is getting in on the action with the new XC40 Recharge. It's basically Volvo's XC40 compact SUV, but with a battery that can go about 210 miles. It's better than you would think. The Volvo XC40 Recharge looks pretty much exactly the same as the gas XC40. Really only the big difference about the front design on the Recharge is this space right here. Now on a regular gas XC40, this right here would be the grill, but because it's an electric vehicle, it's not a grill. Now to cover it up, Volvo just took, took the, the gas XC40 and then took this piece of sheet metal and just covered it up. It looks fine, I like it, but I feel like they should have done a better job of designing it so it looks more unique. Now moving on to the headlights, they're also pretty much exactly the same thing as the regular XC40. They are daytime running lights, which is nice, and I do like how they look. Because it's an electric vehicle, the Volvo XC40 Recharge has a frunk instead of the engine. Now you have to open this big thing, and then you have to open a second part, and you finally get into the itsy bitsy mini trunk, frunk of the XC40 Recharge. Now this is probably the smallest frunk in an electric vehicle I've ever seen, and there's like the there's this weird divider that has to go in the middle of the two sides, and then on the two sides. It's extremely small. You probably only have room, if you want to use the trunk, you probably only have room for maybe two pairs of shoes and a water bottle. So it's kind of useless. I do very much like the wheels that are on this car. These, I believe, are the 19-inch options. You can get 20-inch options, um, so that's good. I think these are the 19 ones. I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, moving on to the side. Every XC40 Recharge comes with this two-tone color, which means one color on like the bottom half of the car and then black on the roof and the tr uh, middle pillars here. And then next, this is the charging port, which looks like a gas tank, unlike Tesla's, um, which is fine. It's like, it's easy to open too. You don't have to like actually have the charger to open it, unlike Tesla's. And then one thing I like about, like a cool feature about the exterior is the word recharge, which I like. It's on the bottom of the black trim. I like that feature. Oh, and then one more thing about this side is these funky shaped doors and windows. Um, you have this, you have like the, a square shaped uh, bigger window, and then this weird smaller one that is an odd shape that kind of like merges with the door, which creates a big blind spot. Just like in the front with the headlights, the XC40 Recharge has practically the same taillights as the gas XC40, and they are, no surprise, Volvo's signature taillights. Now opening the trunk, it's pretty much the opposite as the front. It's very spacious with 14.58 cubic feet of cargo space, and yeah, it's just surprisingly a very spacious trunk compared to the front. Uh, there is another like storage compartment under here that you can open, but it can't really hold any storage, uh, unlike the Tesla Model 3. Um, it's re it really just like holds some sort of supplies. So that really isn't needed, especially because of how spacious this trunk is. You can fit plenty of grocery bags, I'm sure a couple decent sized suitcases. Um, and yeah, it's definitely just a spacious trunk. Before I get into the front seats and the dashboard and infotainment, I want to show you around the back seat a little bit. So in the door here, you have this tiny, tiny little cubby, which you wouldn't really use for anything because it's so tiny. Um, I honestly kind of like these door handles. I like the shape of it. And then I like how the speakers kind of flow with it too. Um, I do not like this material though. In here you have a weird oddly shaped cubby. I guess it's not too oddly shaped. It's a bit narrow though. Um, and then this material is kind of all over throughout the car and it's kind of weird. But then you have more speakers down here. And then right next to the seat, in between the seat and the door, you have these little tiny cubby compartment things. Um, which I don't actually, I think some, if you have a small enough water bottle, you can fit it there. In terms of materials, this is leather, and I'm not sure what this part is called. Uh, it's kind of weird, but um, 
it's there's a lot of it around the car and then over here we have the silver air vents which don't move a ton it's really just up and down a tiny bit and then to the two sides um, but this turns it on you have two seat heaters down here one for each seat uh, USB ports right here. Um, even because it's an electric vehicle, this huge lump is here, which is annoying for the middle seat passenger. Although the middle seat is actually pretty wide, which is good. Um, obviously the back isn't comfortable at all, but yeah. And then in this compartment, you just have two cup holders and you don't have any other like storage or holder right here, which is, I guess, a little annoying, um, but it doesn't really matter that much yeah that's kind of it for the back seat obviously this side is pretty much the same there's if you have if the people in front of you have the seats up far enough there's a ton of leg room there's also a good amount of headroom too as well um but yeah it's just it's pretty ample and space back here and it's overall pretty comfortable so obviously because i'm a child i don't sit in the front seat much or the driver's seat rather um but when, I'm, when I am for this video, it is very comfortable and very nice. Uh, I do very much like the materials on this steering wheel. I like the leather. It feels nice and new. Then this, this part in here is a different material. It's much plasticky or pl plasticky. <laughs> um, and it's not leather, obviously. And then you have silver trim around the buttons and this part on the bottom, as well as down here. So that's the steering wheel. Now to the center console. This gear shifter selector thing, whatever you want to call it, um, is definitely smaller than most other cars. I actually kind of like the feel of it. And then you have, instead of um, parking in the gear selector, you have a parking button, which I think is kind of nice. Two cup holders here, um, space for wireless charging and USB-C charging. Here you have a little trash can, which always can come in handy. And then the center console, which isn't really a good armrest, at least for me, because I don't know. It's kind of far back, and this is kind of in the way. But I like this armrest. On either door, um, there's a big storage compartment place that spreads across the whole door that is pretty narrow, similar to the back seat, uh, but it still has space for like, I don't know, two water bottles and some other stuff. Then, similar to the back seat on either door, you also have this tiny storage compartment, which obviously doesn't really do much, like I said earlier. And then, over here, this trim, which is the only trim you can currently get on the car, which is kind of annoying. You have the same door handles, uh, and then you can't really see it here, but then there's a little air vent here behind the steering wheel, which is like pretty much the exact same thing as the one in the back. It isn't in drive now, but the gauge display in drive mode would kind of look similar to this. So basically you have the drive modes on the right side and then on the left side you'd have the speed you're going at and then in the middle you could there is a there are a bunch of different modes that you can have but one of them that I think is the cool part Audi has this too. I'm not sure if any other brands have them but um you can put the navigation up there which I think is nice. So if you want to have the navigation on you don't have to look to the side you can just look right in front of you which I think is a good feature for a lot of cars to have. On the tops and bottoms you have like little things that don't really matter as much like the temperature outside and the battery percentage. Hello. I'm taking over. Now, you might know, well, actually, you not might know, you probably do know that I know a fair amount, of, fair amount about tech, so I felt that it's only right so that I do a sort of deep dive into the infotainment system. Now, as you would expect, because uh, they all have the same info infotainment system, this is how the home screen looks, and it has the four main functions. You have your navigation, you have your media, or like whatever you're playing over the speakers, whether that be audiobook, radio, uh, music over Bluetooth, whatever. Then you have your phone or, or Bluetooth connectivity, which includes calling, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are both supported on, I think at this point, all Volvos, um, but I do not believe they are wireless. And then you have sort of car status and any car related uh, like info, like information, whatever, and I won't do much about that. Aside from the home screen, you have this uh, sort of app array, and these are all basically all the functions you can do without installing anything or whatever on it. So, like I said before, you have maps, phone, 
um, Bluetooth media, like the whatever you're playing over the speakers, car status, and you have a digital owner's manual. Now let's go into Maps first, and similar to Tesla, uh, Volvo uses Google Maps for uh, navigation. Now unlike Tesla, they don't use their own um, sort of setup for it or look. They, it just basically looks like the Apple, or the Google rather, Maps app on your phone. So you can search for things. Uh, let's just say in this case, McDonald's, McDonald's, I can't spell it, there we go, looks for locations around whatever and shows ratings, which is um, as usual, or as always has, yeah, as it always has been, showing ratings has been a nice um, sort of add-on for Google Maps. Then you can look for different uh, categories. Now this does have a sort of scaled down, like it doesn't have as many categories as the phone app does but it really has anything you're going to need in the car grocery shop grocery stores coffee shops restaurants and charging stations charging stations is um, probably the main thing they'll use the navigation for and so like you can see this isn't actually the closest one um but it uh it, like you can see this one that's in nashua new hampshire um is 26 minutes away but then it has this one that's six minutes away not sure what the deal is with that, um, but you can filter them by different things, um, like the di mainly by the compatible plug, which is obviously really nice so that you don't end up going to a charger that doesn't actually support your vehicle. Now, if I use the Apple style home button and you go back to the main uh, menu, the next thing on it is sort of radio and your media. Now, uh, right now we're in the sort of radio section of, I guess what I would call your media section. <laughs> so you have really any radio stations that are near you. Um, you can add favorites, which is a really nice thing so that you don't go scrolling through this rather extensive list of radio stations. And then for other ways of enjoying your music, you can go to these, Bluetooth Media Player, and there you can connect a device. Now, there is no like obvious way to, from what I can tell, use Sirius XM radio with this Volvo, in particular the XC40 Recharge. I don't know if that's the case with all Volvos, but that's at least the one um, with this. Now you have like your phone connectivity. Now right now one isn't connected, so I'm not going to go into the menu because that would just be pointless. Um, but you could have your, it actually displays your contacts really nicely, like your ones that you sort of have, have on quote speed dial and whatnot. And then you have your car status, which doesn't do a whole lot. It really only shows your tire pressure and when the next service is required for your car um, and you can access your roadside assistance or tow mode. Next you have Google Assistant and if you press it you can use Google Assistant. So let's say tell me a no okay let's try it again. Tell me a joke. Why shouldn't you write with a broken pencil? It's pointless. <laughs> Okay, that actually wasn't that bad. <laughs> but you can do things like that. It's the basic Google Assistant features. Um, if you use Google Home for your smart home devices, but you can ask them to turn on the lights and whatnot. Um, that's pretty common on cars by now. Next, you have the Play Store, um, which you have to sign in in order to use, but that can allow you to use specific apps like Spotify and other things on the Play Store that have versions for car infotainment systems, which, like I said before, includes Spotify, I believe it uh, includes Audi Audible for um, audiobooks and whatnot, because this car uses Google services. Next, you have the owner's manual, pretty basic, but it's a really an easier way to find out things about your car rather than flipping through the huge paper book. Now, that's basically everything that the Volvo infotainment system can do. I don't believe it has a specific name. Now, those are a lot of the same things as most cars these days. It's not really any different, but I do think they're, they do it really nicely and the design is a lot better than some of the other cars. It's also really nice that Volvo uses Google services like Google Assistant, the Play Store and Maps because I believe that Google Assistant is better than any virtual assistant they could come up with. Play Store allows her a lot more functions and uh, specific things kind of than if you didn't have it. And Google Maps is just, let's just say, way better than if they had used just a built-in navigation system by TomTom. Tom. In terms of specs, the Volvo XC40 Recharge has 210 miles on a 78 kilowatt battery. 
Its wheelbase is 106 inches, 7 inches smaller than the Model Y, and it's 13 inches shorter. It can tow up to 2,000 pounds, which is a little more than half of what the Model Y can with the towing package. The base price is 54,000 US dollars, and with the climate and advanced packages, which I do recommend, it is about 56,100 US dollars. So overall, I would say the Volvo XC40 Recharge is a great SUV if you're looking for a safe, small electric SUV.